Hello, today we are going to explore amazing black photographer Gordon Parks. He was born in 1912 in Kansas and was a self-taught photographer. He bought his own camera, taught himself, and became one of the best photographers of the 20th century, civil rights movement, composer, movie director. He did it all. Uh, he got the Julius Roswald Fellowship in 1942, which allowed him to work for the Farm Security Administration, which did a lot of documenting of social problems, social issues of the time. And then he worked for the Office of War Info. Then he did a lot of freelance work, working for Ebony and Vogue, and then Life Magazine, where he worked for 20 years, documenting a ton of American history through one of, I think, the only black photographer at Life Magazine and at the, and um, I think one of the only people of color at Life Magazine at the time. So a really awesome perspective. He got this, for example, one of the projects he worked on was to go to New York, or he was in New York City, to document this uh, gangster in Harlem. He was 17 or 18 years old at the time. So a teenager, uh, barely an adult, right? Like, so I think, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't there at the time, but it seems like they wanted you know, a, a cutting story about, um, or when I say they, like the, Life Magazine. Anyway, they wanted probably something very exciting, but Gordon Parks also took a lot of photographs of this gangster with his family, hanging out, doing dishes, doing everyday things. So Gordon Parks had the genius, I don't know. I mean, his photography is beautiful, but he also documents just everyday life and black Americans doing everyday things. Uh, some of his most famous uh, photographs are American Gothic, which he did in 1942, and Emerging Man in 1950, oh yeah, 42, and then 52. And then in 1963, he photographed Malcolm X and visited the, I think, Nation of Islam for two weeks and then uh, had, I talked about how he was both an insider and an outsider, really. Uh, also his struggles at, being objective to the civil rights mo mo movement while also being one of the only black people in his company and in the journalist field at the time. So it's like, were white journalists being objective or are they objective also, right? Everything is from our own lens and his lens was the camera lens. Uh, he did an incredible job documenting the civil rights movement and segregation. He went to Alabama during the height of Jim Crow laws, which are just chilling. Uh, there's a Gordon Parks Foundation that goes more in depth. But when he recounts going to Alabama and just the, the fear that just pervaded Alabama streets at the time, the amount that he was harassed in his short time there, that he was accompanied by a local to help protect him and uh, oh it's just wild because I've seen these photographs before but then I don't think of them as scary right I'm like oh that's sad or what a sad part of our history but then realizing that level of anxiousness and fear that would pervade such a state of violence um, that yeah not everyone has to worry about it the same amount uh, he, so Gordon Parks was, did a lot of work. He even wrote and directed and produced a ballet called Martin about Martin Luther King Jr. Really incredible. He uh, was a composer. He played piano. Um, and most famously, which I didn't even realize, he directed Shaft. So one of the most, I mean, growing up, the theme song of Shaft was all around in the 80s. So realizing, oh, this same photographer also created one of the first black heroes at the time in 1971. So really incredible. Um, 
Gordon Parks, incredible photographer and a national treasure. You can uh, find his work everywhere. The Museum of Modern Art, uh, at there, there's a Gordon Parks Museum, I think in Kansas and another in New York City. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and happy Black History Month. Bye.